Howdy. Welcome to Activity 2, Video 1. We are going to start this activity using the Word document that you found with the video. Then we'll move into Excel. I want to do some manual math first so you can see what Excel is actually doing for us when we move there. I prepared the materials you are doing now after having many conversations with the professors you will have in your program. They shared with me things that trip students up when they start classes. So I'm going to use a language your professors will use, which will be really important in making sure you are both communicating well. For example, your professors may say, revenue is a linear equation. I want you to know what that means. In this video, we will talk about revenue and costs in the context of linear equations. I certainly also want you to know what revenue means. So, we will review some important math concepts and learn for the first time or review some important accounting concepts. Let's dive into your example and I'll explain. Make sure you have your note packet open to Activity 2 Linear Equations and we're dealing with an example with Nike. It says, Nike produces, which just means manufactures, shoes, which they sell to distributors. Think of a distributor as Academy for $25. Academy will then mark up that shoe and sell it for a lot more, but let's think about what Nike actually gets when they sell the shoe to Academy. When we talk about revenue in mathematical terms, we say revenue is a function of the quantity sold. This means the amount of revenue we record depends on the quantity we sell. So don't let that word function throw you off. It just means revenue depends on quantity sold. So the blank I filled in here with revenue equals R and then in parentheses Q, that's how we represent a function, R parentheses Q. R is revenue, Q is quantity, and the parentheses just means depends on. So revenue depends on quantity. We can represent a function with a formula. So we would say RQ equals price times quantity or P times Q. If we fill in the variable of price, which we were actually given in this problem of 25, then our formula would actually just be equals 25Q, or 25 times Q, with Q being quantity. And we'd be able to determine the revenue at various quantities. For example, if we sell zero units, then we would have zero revenue. If we sell one unit, then we would have $25 in revenue. If we sell two units, then we would have 50 in revenue, and so on. We can also represent revenue as a function of quantity sold in a table format. One column would include quantity, the other revenue. If we are manually creating the table, then we would calculate each value using the formula that we had on the previous slide. So we would have 0 times 25 equals 0, 1 times 25 equals 2, and so on. We'll use Excel in a moment to quickly do this for us, but go ahead and pause the video for a second just to make sure you have been paying attention and fill in revenue at 3 units sold and 4 units sold. It should be pretty easy, but I just want to make sure that you've been paying attention. Go ahead and pause. Welcome back. You should have calculated $75 in revenue for 3 units sold and $100 in revenue for 4 units sold. You just multiply 3 by 25, which is just quantity times price, and 4 by 25, again, quantity times price at 4 units. Finally, we can represent revenue with a graph. To graph revenue, we would want to find the intersection of each data point from our table on the previous slide. If we refer back to our table, we can see that revenue is zero when quantity is zero. So we want to plot that point first on our graph. So we're just saying at zero quantity, revenue, which is this y-axis here, revenue is zero. So we want to plot that first point. Our next point, if we remember back, was at one unit, we had revenue of 25, which should be somewhere right in there. So we'll plot that point. Again, go ahead and pause the video and make sure you can plot the next three points on the graph 
on your in your note packet and you'll need to actually draw out the graph so take a minute to draw out that y-axis with revenue and the x-axis with quantity so that you can just get a feel for what you're graphing there all right welcome back you should have plotted points at the intersection of 2 and 50 3 and 75 and finally 4 and 100 Finally, we want to connect these plot points with a line. So we'll just draw a line there and that will finish our graph. Our graph proves the revenue function is a linear equation because our graph shows us a straight line. Let's remember back to some of our high school math classes. In this case, the slope of our line was 25. So that just means that the line goes up by 25 for every change in quantity. If you remember back to your algebra days, the slope is the coefficient that we multiply by the variable. So in this case of our formula, the coefficient is that 25, what we're multiplying by the variable. That's our slope. An alternative to a linear equation is a quadratic equation. We won't use quadratic equations in this module, but you may see some quadratic equations in your program. As a reminder, you can identify a quadratic equation because the variable will be squared, like you see here, and the graph will show you a parabola. That's this curved line here versus the straight line that we saw before. That completes what we've done manually for revenue. In the next video, we will complete what we just did manually, but do it in Excel.